Hello again everyone and welcome back to another video about running .NET 6 serverless applications using AWS SAM. Today we're going to talk about dependency injection. Now if you're building applications with .NET today then you're probably already pretty familiar with dependency injection. If not, it's an awesome way of creating more readable and testable code as well as allowing you to decouple the usage of an object from its implementation and creation. Now, before we get into the code today, I just want to touch quickly on Lambda execution environments. So when a Lambda function is invoked, the Lambda service creates an execution environment for your function to run in. These execution environments are completely separated from each other and each execution environment can only process a single event at any one time. If two events arrive at the same time, two execution environments will be created. After processing of an event has completed, these execution environments do stick around for a little while. If you were to Google that, you might find five minutes, 15 minutes, one hour for these execution environments. Well, there's actually no SLA from the Lambda team for how long these execution environments will stay around for. But the fact that they're long lived actually allows us to use that to our advantage. So we can front load the configuration of our dependency injection and the initialization of any dependencies or objects and then reuse them initialized services from invocation to invocation. So now that we've quickly covered execution environments, let's jump into the code and see what that actually looks like in practice. Okay, so here we are in our code base now, and there's a couple of things I want to touch on before we get into dependency injection. And the first is, is let's say we needed to add some business logic to our function to say that if the IP address was a was a tender or IP address, for example, then we wanted to return a 400 error. And then let's also say that we wanted to write some tests, some, some unit tests for this function. That would be really quite tricky to do because the, the network logic for retrieving the IP address is tied up with the business logic. And it can also make, you know, it's easy to be difficult to substitute out this functionality for getting a calling IP address for some different service a different implementation without actually touching our business logic code, i.e. this function. This function's now also got multiple responsibilities. It's responsible for the business logic, for the actual API response for um, API gateway, and it's also responsible for the retrieval of the IP address. So there's a lot of stuff tied up in this one function. And this is where dependency injection can become really helpful. So what I've done is I've added a shared just a class library project um, just for some shared functionality. And in there, I'm going to create a I network service interface. Put that in hello world.shared. And we will have a I network service interface. And we're going to have one method in there, which is going to be and I network server and get calling IP. Okay, cool. And then we can actually add an implementation of that um, interface. That will be again in the hello world shared namespace. We would have a network service class which inherits from I network service. And then when we go to our function, we basically want to take all of that there and put that into there. So we now have an implementation of our network service and we've abstracted that away from our actual business logic. So business logic is nice and clean. And now if you remember in the last video, we talked about the structure of a function and anything outside of the function handler is relatively long lived as long as the execution environment is available. So what we can then do is we can actually have a private read only I network service and we'll call that network service. 
and we might make that equal to a new network service. And then I'll record down here, changes to install network service to get calling IP. Okay, super. Now that, that, that solves the problem of abstracting away our network implementation logic from our business logic, but it's still not very testable. You know, if I was to test this function now, it would um, still need the actual implementation of a network service. And I'm gonna get on to testing more in the next video. What we can do is actually a lot while we would do dependency injection in a normal .NET application. So I create a constructor that takes an I network service, um, and I'll explain why I've set that to null in a second. We can actually start to do some dependency injection, and the only difference with dependency dependency injection in Lambda is that you need to actually configure that dependency injection container yourself. So you'll notice in the shared library over here, I've got this startup class. And in the startup class, I have created a new service collection and I'm just building a service provider ready to be used for uh, in my Lambda functions. So all I need to add in here is service collection dot add singleton and we'll add the network service singleton. So there we've now got a configured dependency injection container with our network service. And then in here, I can then now say this dot network service equals. So in here, if I do startup dot configure services, and then we say startup dot services get 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 required service get required service and network service. Let's add a reference. Yeah. So what I'm saying is if the if the network service that's passed into the constructor is null, then we'll actually retrieve one from the dependency injection container that we've just configured in this configure services method. And the reason I do that is so that if I want to unit test this function, I can actually pass in a mock implementation of that network service. And I, again, I will come on to that in the next video. One slight caveat to this is that the Lambda service requires a parameterless constructor function so if I add a parameter construction um, that's this so if I just add one, a single parameter this constructor and just make that call um, the other constructor passing null and I'm actually going to make that an internal function so that it can only be called internally in here okay awesome so we've now got dependency injection configured in our, our lambda function it's testable we can just substitute in a mock version of this network service if we need to, and we'll come on to that in the next video. And we've also abstracted some of that implementation logic, the things that are the, the external of our application, and we've kept our business logic nice and clean, albeit pretty trivial. That's dependency injection in Lambda, nice and easy to configure, nice and easy to set up. And it gives you that shared place where you can now configure across all of your Lambda functions the dependency injection, maybe any configuration, maybe some logging or observability systems. You can configure everything in one place and then share that across all your Lambda functions and use it in a way that's familiar to .NET developers. That's all I've got today. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, please subscribe, and I will see you again next week. Thank you.